nothing like living a simple life. Something about those aches and pains from working on the farm. Hey guys, it's Eric. Check it out. This is one heck of an upgrade to my radio setup. This is, well, let me open it up. I'll show you what it is. It is a lithium ion battery and it's a big one. This is something that you can use for a lot of different things. Holy smokes, this is a big one. There it is. Start getting it out of the box. That, my friends, that, my friends, is a Unowix 12 volts, 100 amp hour, 100 amp hour uh, deep cell battery. This thing here is such a massive upgrade over regular deep cell batteries because on a regular deep cell battery you are able to discharge if it's a 100 amp hour battery so if we sat one next to it first of all I would say that this thing weighs maybe 30 to 40 pounds where a deep cell of similar size would probably be close to 80 or 90 pounds so about a third of the weight but back to what I was saying 12 volt 100 amp hour if it's a deep cell battery, conventional lead acid or gel cell battery, you are only going to be able to use half of the rated amp average, and that's max. If you go beyond the half, you are going to start damaging the battery. On a lithium ion battery, that is not the case. You can discharge this thing down almost to zero, and in some cases, it's okay to go all the way to zero. So 100 amp hours means 100 amp hours. So what does that mean price wise? Yeah, a lithium ion battery like this is gonna cost more. But when you realize that it takes two conventional lead acid batteries to equal the overall amp hour capacity of one of these, you now realize that this isn't such a bad deal after all. In fact, the price on these has come down a lot, and I mean a lot. It wasn't, but two and a half years ago that I bought a 220 amp hour battery and it cost about four times what this costs. So you can do the math there at how much prices have changed just in that little amount of time. This one here is capable of doing a lot of things. What it's gonna do here on my farm, my radio station has a 200 watt solar array above it. And I run it sometimes off of a car battery, and sometimes I run it off of one of those portable power packs that has everything built in. With this, I will run it exclusively off of this. I'm going to run it off of this with a charge controller, and that is what will power um, an a AM transmitting station as well as some of my CB equipment. So that is, that is pretty awesome. This is all it takes to use solar to recharge something like this, and these are very inexpensive. In fact, this is a spare that I have because they were, there was a company on eBay that had them so cheap, I think they were like eight bucks, that I went ahead and picked up two or three of them in case one of them pooped out on me or died on me. But here you go, um, solar array gets plugged in there, battery gets plugged in there, your direct 12 volt out goes through there, and you can see the connections down at the bottom for that. It does also come with USB ports built in on this one and you can set up you know how to charge it So you could put maybe two or three hundred watts into a battery like this and you'd be able to charge this thing fairly quickly a few hours time and so uh, this is it so you'd have this And something like this depending on the size you needed and then a hundred watt 200 watt 300 watt panel and you've got yourself a off-grid solar array. You've got yourself a power station that never needs gasoline to provide you with energy. It's incredible stuff. I've talked about it a lot on my channel, solar being such an interesting thing that I, I kind of thought was so mystical and uh, out of my league. But once I got into it, I realized it's pretty much plug and play. Uh, this converts to your solar energy that comes in off your solar panels to something that can charge the battery. The battery then in turn comes out to an inverter and the inverter powers your equipment like nothing was going on. Really cool stuff. Now solar panel wise, you could use anything from uh, foldable panels like I've, I've shown here on the channel to regular uh, 100 watt panels like uh, I have my system made out of. 
those prices are going up a little bit, but you can still, if you poke around, find 100 watts for less than $100. And so you can get an idea of the overall cost of a system like this to get started. You're not going to be producing as much energy as a gasoline generator with this setup right here, but you're also having a one-time cost. You invest in all this stuff and you never need to pour gas in it, you never need to change the oil in it, you never need to think about it again. Once it's up, it's up. And as long as the sun shines every couple of days and charges these batteries, you have a fairly unlimited supply of power. That I always felt like has offset any loss of the amount of wattages I have available versus a, a gasoline engine or even a diesel engine. So let's wrap this thing up here. I'll just get back. But that's, you know, there's your prepper thing. So for a prepper, this is a portable power supply that's going to have a massive amount of reserve capacity. 100 amp hours is no joke. But there is another thought that I had for this. And I believe that probably next summer I'll be moving it out of the radio station and into a boat. And you want to say what? And I say, yeah. So we had long ago a little 12 foot rowboat with an electric trolling motor and again a huge heavy deep cell battery about the size of this but again close to 100 pounds and we would hook it up to our little trolling motor and we'd go out on the lake and we'd travel around on the lake for a while but again 100 amp hours versus 100 amp hours that you can only use half of it wasn't exactly great range you know and what ended up happening was occasionally we'd go out and we'd stay out too long and I'd end up running that battery down and in less than one season, I ruined a $135 deep cell battery. And so that became kind of an expensive uh, thing to have. With this, I can charge it up. I can, actually, what I'll do is charge it up for free off the sun. And then I'll pop it in our little 12-foot boat. And then we'll go out and use that whole 100 amp hours without fear that I'm going to damage the battery. So that is really cool. That's something I want to use. Another thing that this could be used for, I don't think I'm going to use this in our bus camper. You know, we have that Volkswagen bus camper that I've been uh, fixing up and getting ready for next year. And it's going to have 200 watts of solar. But I almost feel like for a vehicle that size for, you know, to power equipment, that this would be overkill. This would be good at running high amperage stuff, like if you had a camper and had a microwave in it. This would run a microwave for a small amount of time, you know, in you know, short bursts. You wouldn't want to run a microwave for an hour, although what would you be cooking? It would take an hour. So <laughs> I do wonder that. But you could use it with a proper inverter to run a microwave because it does have enough of uh, you know, a well of energy to go off of. So Really cool. So, I, you know, I just want to make you aware of these, the Uniwix, and there are a lot of opportunities to put these in place. And of course, you can stack these, and so that becomes an even better way. You can have, you know, a thousand amp hours of reserve capacity if you want to build a solar array capable of charging that much. So, there are a lot of things that I can do with this, um, but it was something I wanted to get because. Right now, it replaces an existing lead acid technology. In the future, it goes on to a different project. And in the future after that, it might go on to yet another different project. There is one other benefit to these lithium ion batteries other than the weight and the overall capacity, and that is the recharge capabilities. A lead acid battery, even if it's well cared for and you never go below 50%, only has a certain amount of cycles. In other words, you, you're going to discharge it and then recharge it, discharge it and recharge it. And that might be five or 600 times. Generally speaking, on these, you are talking about thousands and thousands of times without causing any kind of damage. It doesn't get memory and it doesn't uh, get, you know, calcificated. I don't know what's it called? Uh, sulfide, I think is what it is. Like when the lead plates inside of a lead acid battery. They get, they get corrosion built up on them, and now the electrolysis process doesn't work as well. That's how they lose efficiency and die. Lead acid batteries do not, uh, or I'm sorry, lithium batteries do not suffer from those, those kind of problems. On the top here, we have our posts, and these are uh, screw-in type posts. And it comes with a kit here. So we do have, you know, screw downs. I'll actually go ahead and put those in just so I don't lose that. So we screw in posts there and it does have nice terminal caps that, that fit over that to kind of protect it and hopefully 
less of a chance of uh, you know accidentally sparking something. Another nice thing about lithium ion batteries is that there's no cells to top off. This is a sealed system. It just does what it does. This model is the 12-100, 12 12.8 volts at full charge, 100 amp hours, energy capacity 100, I'm sorry, 1,280 watt hours, so a good amount of juice, most definitely. And I love the fact that it comes with a carrying handle. I guess that'll do it. If you have questions about moving into lithium ion, I have gone a lot into solar uh, here on the farm in the last couple of years. And I decided early on, when these things were still a whole lot more expensive than they are now, that this was the way to go, even in a cold climate. And I, uh, after a couple of years of usage, am now convinced that that was the right decision. If you're planning to get into solar, if you're looking for something that is going to give you more capacity on a trolling motor, more capacity and longer runtime in a camper, this, this is it. This is the thing. Now, I don't know about using something like this in a car. I don't know what the advantage would be or even if it's feasible to do so, but I just can't see the advantage since a, a car battery is not generally going to be going up and down as much as as a deep cell battery being used in a marine or camper application, but it's something you might want to look into on your own. I guess that'll do it for today, my friends. I did want to share this with you. Really cool product, and I will leave a link down in the description as to where you can find your own. Take care.